thank you very much for selecting my uh, uh, case. So uh, the topic is coronary burn entrapment, uh, kokishi ph phenomenon. So kokishi is a, a Japanese uh, doll or toy that looks like a rotaber. That's why they, they, they came up with that name. So I'd like to start with, um, so, you know, to earth, to be human, uh, Alexander Pope. So if uh, we're all susceptible to making mistakes and we're, um, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to start with a case. Uh, so um, we have a 52-year-old uh, gentleman. He has a history of diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, all the risk factors. He presented um, a few months prior with um, chest pain and elevated troponins. Uh, 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 and he, ha he had an angiogram that was done to, uh, for him, and it shows severe calcific triple vessel uh, coronary disease. So at that time, he was uh, told, uh, you know, to uh, he was referred for a cabbage, um, and uh, as an outpatient, and you know he he refused. He wanted a second opinion. So he came to me in the clinic, and he asked me whether surgery is uh, 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 a good option. So I told him surgery is really your best option based on the angiogram, and I told him to go talk to the surgeon and um, you know get his. Uh, Opinion. So he went to the surgeon. He saw him, um, and he, they, they, uh, the surgeon agreed to do it for him. However, the patient was still adamant that he doesn't want surgery and he wanted PCI. Uh, so again, he came to me, and I told him, like, look, surgery is your best option, but if you want PCI, we'll do it for you. Uh, it's really your your decision. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. Uh, in terms of his um, studies, so his ECG showed normal sinus rhythm. Those were his labs when he presented initially with the NSTEMI. So he had elevated troponins. His hemoglobin was normal. Creatinine is normal. Normal renal function. Echo was also relatively uh, unremarkable. Normal EF. So this is his angiogram. Um, so this. So, so you know, I started with the right. So the left is also severely diseased. Um, but when I started with the PCI, I started with the right. And you can see that the right system is heavily calcific, is tortuous, and severely diseased. Um, so uh, I went with a microcatheter. So you see the microcatheter distally with a wire, exchanged the microcatheter, I mean, sorry, the wire for a rota uh, floppy wire. And then we started doing uh, rota ablation. So this. Uh, the, the beginning of uh, the, uh, the, the burring, and uh, you know, we, we went from proximal to mid. Um, 1.5? 1.5 millimeters of burr, yes. Uh, anyhow, what happened was that uh, uh, the, the, so we started with 1.5, as we mentioned. Then we advanced the burr under dinoglide assistance. And once we advanced the burr that, in the mid segment, the burr stalled and it became entrapped. So what we did, we tried to do, attempt a few maneuvers to retrieve the, um, the burr, um, and I'll come to that later, but uh, what ended up happening is that we could not uh, you know, use those techniques, so we ended up to forcefully remove it, um, and that was successful in, in um, um, uh, really, uh, uh, you know, dislodging it or removing it. So then we ended up with this, um, patient was hemodynamically stable. Um, he was having chest pain, obviously, but he was stable. Um, and you can see some, some perforations, some maybe what you call um, uh, 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 some dissections. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we did an echo at that time. There was no effusion. Um, I think they were all contained perforations. Um, so. This is the summary of the procedure. So as I said, he was hemodynamically stable. He didn't have chest pain. Um, we attempted to rewire the RCA, but the wire kept going into um, dissection planes and subintimal space. So we decided to abort. Uh, even uh, I mean, We tried for a couple of hours, maybe like two hours, uh, trying to um, uh, 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 revascularize the RCA, but uh, unfortunately it failed. And then um, we sent him to the CCU. He had like a very small pocket of pericardial effusion, but no tamponade. And then ultimately we sent him for a cabbage. So he, he underwent cabbage and he's actually did well with the cabbage. 
and he's recovered well to this day. Um, so that's good. Um, so it comes down to how do you manage entrapped burr? Because this is a complication that can happen with people who do rotablation, and you need to know how to troubleshoot the problem. Um, so this is the algorithm in terms of how to manage it, and we'll go uh, step by step on, on each of these um, techniques. There are some recommended techniques, not recommended um, approaches, and some more kind of complicated uh, ways to deal with it. So the first thing you need to do, do not panic, and then call the surgeon, very important. First thing you do, call the surgeon. Uh, for backup. And then ensure that you have adequate anticoagulation, so you have to have a good ACT. Um, the other thing, the third thing is uh, administer vasodilators, intracoronary vasodilators that can also facilitate anti-grade flow and relieve the spasm. So the first strategy that is recommended is what we call mother-to-child technique. Um, and the way you do this is that you end up cutting the um, the, the rota burr and the, at the uh, fixation point. So if, if, you, if you're familiar with rota, there's like a, a sheath, like a small Teflon sheath. And uh, what you do is when you cut the burr, you can remove that sheath. And when you remove the sheath, you can then advance uh, like a guide liner or guide extension catheter. And what's recommended is that you use a five French uh, guide liner or guidezilla um, to, uh, once you've exposed the shaft. And then you can advance it and uh, close to the uh, rotor burr or trap burr, and then by, by doing some traction, you can uh, free it. So that's one way of dealing with this. Um, the second way uh, is to pass a second wire, and I, ideally you should do the ping pong technique, so you should get a second access. Uh, and the reason for that is because the, um, the, the, if you're using single axis or the axis where the burr is entrapped, the, um, the rotor drive shaft is about 4.3 French. So you will not have enough room for you to advance wires. So it's better to go with a second axis, um, use the ping pong technique, get the wire across. Once you get the wire across, you can get a, a, a balloon and then you can uh, dislodge it. So that's another way of uh, dealing with it. Um, or the, alternatively, you can always upsize the the guide to a seven or eight French. Uh, the third strategy is manual traction. Um, this is what we did. Um, so um, it's not really the, the, the ideal way to deal with it, um, but it, 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 it can be, if you're like, um, you know, short on, uh, 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 on options, then you can do this. Is basically you just pull uh, very hard, but make sure that you don't get the guide uh, suck the guide in. So you have to pull the guide and 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 the wire and the rotor burr all uh, as a unit, and that's where you can, that way you can um, free the the, the burr. Uh, so some other proposed methods. Um, there is um, you can feed a gooseneck snare over the shaft and then pull with the with the snare. There's the mini star technique, and I'm going to show you an example of that. And then the last resort is um, emergent surgical retrieval. So this is an example of uh, the mini star technique. So people who are familiar with doing anti-grade dissection re-entry can um, uh, utilize this uh, method. So you get a microcatheter, um, this ping pong again, you have a second access, you get a microcatheter, and you basically, and in this case, they use the fielder XTA and you knuckle it and you go in the subintimal space. So once the wire is in the subintimal space, you can advance a balloon and then in the subintimal space, you can uh, inflate the balloon and that can dislodge the uh, rotor burr. So this is an example of it. Here's the rotor burr being pulled once the uh, balloon was inflated in the subintimal space. So that's a very handy technique um, and uh, can be very helpful. So, you know, we talked about how to deal with the problem, but then prevention is also important. So preventative strategies, um, um, uh, 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 you know, is the cornerstone of not having this problem. So the burr, just to get an idea, the burr is oval shaped. So the rotor burr is coated with diamonds at the tip, at the distal end. Um, so it allows for anti-grade ablation. However, the proximal end is not coated with diamonds. So it prohibits ablation retrograde. So if you advance the, the burr, um, 
uh, and and your um, you, you advance the the bird beyond the lesion, then uh, you could potentially oops, you can potentially um, um, uh, 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 entrap it. So uh, I don't have my slides. <laughs> should, should we go back? Just I have like two more slides. Yeah, I'll have two slides. So, um, uh, so you have to use gentle uh, pecking motion. So advance the burr uh, quickly, and then also watch for deceleration. So if you have more than 5,000 RPMs of deceleration, then that can also increase the risk of uh, uh, burr entrapment because you have slower flow. So that you have to watch out for that, um, and then increase the speed as needed. Um, if the vessel obviously is uh, tortuous and angulated, then that would also be a problem, and then you may have to use a stiffer wire, like the extra support rotor wire. So, um, uh, 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 go back to the end. So, I just like to end the, the talk with this. So, if you don't make, so this is what Frank uh, Wilczek said: if you don't make mistakes, you're not working hard enough, um, and that's a big mistake. So, uh, as as operators, we deal with complications a lot because we work a lot. And we do complex cases. So if you don't, if you're not making, if you're not, you don't have complications, basically you're not working. <laughs> Great. I like Thanks. to end with that. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much.